The days that follow Su Jin's and Tolu's confrontation are no easier. Su Jin and her group have ramped up their bullying, the snide comments in the hallway, the accidental bumps that send her books flying, and the whispers behind her back make school a battlefield. Tolu, once so eager to experience Seoul, now feels isolated. But what hurts most is Jisoo's indifference. He continues to act distant at school, hanging out with his popular friends, while Tolu faces the relentless cruelty of Su Jin's clique alone. He doesn't defend her, doesn't acknowledge her, and it's starting to make Tolu feel like their moments together at home never happened. She catches him glancing at her occasionally, but he looks away every time, leaving her feeling confused and hurt. One day, their teacher announces that their class is taking a field trip to the beach. Tolu is excited, though nervous because she has no real friends, and the idea of being stuck on a bus with Su Jin and her crew fills her with anxiety. On the morning of the trip, Tolu boards the bus, feeling more like an outsider than ever. She finds an empty seat near the back, hoping to avoid attention. Hey, can I sit with you? Tolu looks up to see a girl about her age with short, stylish hair. Sure, Tolu says. The girl introduces herself as Hani. I've never met anyone from Nigeria before, Hani says excitedly. I've always wanted to visit. The two start talking, and for the first time in weeks, Tolu feels a bit of the weight lift off her shoulders. Jisoo is seated a few rows ahead, his headphones on as he stares out the window. Even from a distance, he looks effortlessly cool. Hani notices her distraction. You okay? Tolu quickly snaps back to the conversation, offering a weak smile. Yeah, I'm fine. The bus pulls up to the beach and the students pour out, excited for a day of fun under the sun. Tolu tries to join in, but her eyes keep wandering towards Jisoo. He's hanging out with Su Jin and her group. Tolu's stomach churns at the sight. Su Jin drapes herself all over him, and even though Tolu knows it's probably an act, it still stings. Hani, noticing her friend's sudden quietness, nudges her. Tolu shakes her head. It's nothing, just thinking. She doesn't understand him. One minute he's cold and distant. The next he's pulling her into his world, only to push her away again. As the afternoon progresses, Tolu tries to focus on enjoying the beach with Hani. They take selfies, dip their feet in the water, and share stories about their respective homes. Tolu tells Hani about Nigerian foods like jollof rice and a goosey soup, while Hani listens attentively. Soon, it is evening, and the teacher tells everyone to pack up as the bus will be here soon. Tolu's mood is still heavy. She tries to hide it, but Hani picks up on the subtle changes in her demeanor. You sure you're okay? Hani asks again as they walk towards the bus. Tolu forces a smile. Yeah, just tired, I guess. The sun begins to set as the students board the bus to head back to the city. Tolu takes her seat next to Hani, mentally preparing for the long ride home. But just as the bus is about to leave, something unexpected happens. Jisoo walks down the aisle, his hands in his pockets. Hani, switch seats with me, he says his voice calm but firm. Hani looks between them, slightly confused but not questioning it. She grabs her things and moves to another seat without a word. Tolu is stunned, her heart racing as Jisoo sits down next to her. Why is he sitting with me? For a while, neither of them speaks. The tension between them is palpable, and Tolu can't shake the feeling that this moment is charged with meaning. From the front of the bus, Su Jin's eyes are on them, her face twisted with jealousy. She glares at Tolu. It's clear that Su Jin isn't happy. As the bus rumbles back toward the city, Tolu dares to break the silence. Why did you sit here, she asks, her voice quieter than she intended. Jisoo pulls out one earbud and turns to look at her. There's a hint of a smirk on his lips. Why not? Tolu frowns. Frustrated by his cryptic responses, you've been ignoring me all day, he shrugs. I've been busy. Busy with Su Jin? Tolu can't help but blurt out, her jealousy bubbling to the surface. Jisoo's smirk fades slightly and he leans closer, lowering his voice. Are you jealous? Tolu's face burns. For a moment, 
Jisoo studies her face, his expression softening. Tolu's breath catches in her throat, and just when she's about to press further, Jisoo leans back in his seat, putting his earbud back in and closing his eyes. The conversation is over, and Tolu is left with more questions than answers. Later that evening, back at the Han household, Tolu sits at the dining table trying to focus on her homework. Her mind is a whirlwind of emotions. Jisoo walks into the kitchen, casually leaning against the doorframe like he always does, his face unreadable. Hey, he calls, almost too casually, and she feels him studying her. Can you help me with this? he asks, holding out his notebook. I'm failing history, and if I don't pass this test, I'll be in trouble. She hesitates but nods. They move to Jisoo's room where he sits on the bed while Tolu lays out her notes on his desk. As they study together, the tension between them starts to melt away. For the first time in weeks, they laugh at small things, and Tolu feels a glimmer of what she thought had been lost. Tolu explains the historical events they're studying, but her eyes keep drifting to Jisoo, who seems more focused on her than the lesson. At one point, their hands brush as she passes him a paper, and a spark of electricity passes between them. As they finish up the session, Tolu gathers her things. You'll be fine for the test, she says, smiling. Just don't overthink it. He nods, still looking at her. Thanks for this, he says quietly, his voice softer than usual. She nods and leaves the room, but she's flustered. The entire time she had felt his gaze on her, and now she wasn't sure what to think. Later that night, in her room, Tolu realises she left one of her textbooks in Jisoo's room. I'll just sneak in and get it. He's probably asleep by now, she thinks. Tolu tiptoes down the hallway and gently opens the door to his room, her heart racing. She spots her book near his desk and moves quickly to grab it. Just as she reaches for it, Tolu freezes. Jisoo is not asleep. He's lying in bed watching her with an amused smirk. I, I left my book she stammers, feeling her face heat up. Jisoo raises an eyebrow, still watching her. Then, in a swift motion, he reaches out and grabs her wrist, pulling her onto the bed with him. Tolu gasps as she lands beside him, their faces inches apart. For a moment, they just stare at each other, the tension between them simmering. His hand slowly releases her wrist, but he doesn't move away. Instead, he leans in, his lips hovering close to hers, as if testing the waters. Tolu's breath hitches and her mind spins. She knows she should get up, leave the room and forget this ever happened. But something in his gaze holds her captive. Just as he's about to close the distance, she pulls back, heart pounding. I should go. The next morning, Tolu avoids Jisoo for breakfast. She can barely look at him and the encounter from last night plays over and over in her head. What did it mean? Was he just teasing her, or was there something more? She can't tell anymore. At school, things with Su Jin and her friends continue. She thinks she can just waltz in and steal him, Su Jin says loudly in class, making sure Tolu can hear. The other girls laugh, and Tolu feels the burn of humiliation. But what hurts most is that, again, Jisoo still doesn't step in. He watches from the sidelines, his face unreadable as always, but he does nothing to stop Su Jin or her friends. That evening, Tolu can't take it anymore. She confronts him at home. Why don't you ever stand up for me? She demands, her voice shaking with anger and hurt. You see what they do to me, but you never say anything. Jisoo leans against the wall his arms crossed, his face hard. It's not my business. Not your business? Tolu's voice rises. You pull me into your bed, mess with my head, and then act like you don't care. What am I supposed to think? Jisoo looks at her, his jaw clenched. I didn't ask you to get involved with me. Tolu feels her heart drop, his words sting. And for a moment, she wonders if she's been foolish this whole time. Maybe Su Jin was right. Maybe she's just another girl who fell for the bad boy and got burned. You're right, Tolu says quietly, backing away. I shouldn't have bothered. She turns and leaves, 
feeling the weight of rejection settle in her chest. Later that night, Jisoo knocks on her door. Tolu is curled up on her bed, trying to make sense of everything that's happened. She doesn't want to see him, but he steps inside anyway. Hey, he says, his voice low. Look, let me know if they ever tease you again. Su Jin and her friends, Tolu looks up at him, surprised by the firmness of his voice. For the first time, he's not the cocky, cold bad boy she's come to know. Tolu doesn't say anything, but the hurt in her chest softens a little. Maybe he's not perfect, but neither is she.